Thursday, December 14th, 2023, and the trucking company just dropped off these boxes. So I've got six boxes with uh, almost the entire kit here and uh, couldn't help myself. I've already broken into the empennage box and I'm starting to pull parts out for the uh, assembly of the empennage and I'm starting to sort parts. So everything comes with a specific part number. We have an HS, which stands for Horizontal Stabilizer Skin-001. Over here, I have an HSCHL002. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll group all these parts together like I have here, and then I'm confirming that over here on the, on the plans and the instructions, the Horizontal Stabilizer Assembly. So, same thing over here. I've got elevator parts all together. There's elevator, uh, that's actually rudder uh, skin, and I've got elevator parts here and rudder parts over here. Something I noticed as I was beginning to sort of inventory and hang things up on this pegboard, um, I just assumed because it was in the same bag that it belonged to that specific component. So let me explain. In the empennage uh, crate, there are parts for the elevator, parts for the horizontal stabilizer, parts for the vertical stabilizer, parts for the rudder, etc. If it's an elevator part, it begins with the uh, initials EL. If it's a rudder part, RD, vertical stabilizer, VS, etc. So here's an example of a bag of parts that I, I, this area here is elevator parts. And so here's an example of a bag that I put in the um, elevator section on the pegboard because I just assumed everything in here was elevator but then I come down through and I start looking elevator 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 I go down elevator oops here it is, here it is rudder there's one part right there that's mixed in with the rudder so um, it made me realize that all of the bags really need to be opened up and pulled and the contents pulled out and then you'll find that some of the pieces, like there are ribs that are together, like some of these ribs were uh, all bunched together in the same bag. Well, these are elevator ribs, but there's also ribs for, you know, vertical stabilizer and there's ribs over here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that, that over there was rudder. These are ribs for vertical stabilizer. So it took me a minute to get that sorted out but I'm glad I've got everything hung on this pegboard. It makes things a lot easier. So this is uh, day two. We received the kit yesterday and I'm beginning to assemble the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So I should have that done by today. I've almost finished pulling off all of the plastic um, on the parts, which I'm learning is not exactly fun, but I think I've come up with a couple of I don't know, shortcuts, maybe some things that help a little bit, and I'll show you that right now. So I have rolls and rolls and rolls of this white tape that was used when we installed this uh, Bluetex insulation here. Um, you can see it more on this wall. It's really to um, tape the joints together, um, but a bunch of it was left over, so I just, I've always wondered what I was gonna do with all that tape and I think I found a use for it. So removing all of the plastic off of these aluminum pieces has become a bear. And um, a lot of it's because the aluminum gets, or excuse me, the plastic gets scored when it's been in the crate and then you pull it back and it just comes off because something got pushed against that or slid across that piece of aluminum and then put a little scratch on the plastic and so the whole piece just breaks off and you gotta take your fingernail and get started up all over again. So I took that white tape I have and I've just been putting it on the back of these long flat pieces and really kinda start pulling it. Oh, there, see that was another problem. But it makes it easy. I can bring it back here, put this back onto the tape and just start pulling and seems to be working pretty well if I if I miss a piece or the white tape doesn't pick it up I can bring it back re you know 
put it back on that plastic and start pulling again. But this looks like this one's going to come off in one pass. We'll see here. Cut this off. So there it is. A little piece on the end there, but that's it. So that's a little shortcut that I've been using to get the plastic off. I know um, in some of the manuals and a couple of the YouTube videos, it talks about using that um, aircraft simple green to clean the aluminum. Honestly, um, I've been just, just been using this isopro isopropyl 91% uh, alcohol and that works very well for me. Use the red Scotch-Brite pad. Take the uh, isopropyl, I, I can't say that. Isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. That gets all the sticky residue off and all the, the ink and stuff from the mill from where the pieces were cut on a single sheet and that cleans it up. So. That, I think that saves a step from having to take this piece over to the sink and rinsing it off when you're using the Simple Green. Um, I came up with this idea when I was using the Stewart's system uh, to paint the Bearhawk, and uh, I'm gonna use it on this project as well. It seems to work very, very well. Saturday morning, December 16th, 2023, and this is what I got completed yesterday on day two. Uh, Day two was a full day, about eight to nine hours, and uh, basically inventoried everything out of the boxes. Some of the boxes are back here. This is the empennage kit, or the beginning of the empennage kit, kit uh, with the vertical stabilizer. So the morning I spent pretty much inventorying all the parts that were in the empennage kit, and then I started trying to decipher the plans. And it takes a little bit, but once you get the concept then things start to flow and that uh that's kind of slowed me down a little bit one of the things i wish i could get you know there's item numbers if you look at like item number one and then you go down here to the plan you find item number one but it's an actual part number is printed on the part itself so you have to kind of figure out well see like there'll be a there'll be a a sticker on the part that has that number but it doesn't have that number. So you have to line all that up and figure out which is which. So I kind of went behind. After I peeled the plastic off, I would write numbers with a marker on here and <clears throat> realize that's probably not the number I need. I'm just gonna write, start writing item numbers once I pull the plastic off. So if I just have the item number on here, that's gonna help me with the plans. Uh, I did the dimpling and dimpling went, Pretty well I had to make some changes uh, well make some modifications to the dimple dies and the dimpler tool to get into these ribs because the tool was uh, too long and it would hit the back of this rib and I couldn't get to it so um, I'll show you what I had to do so the dimple dies do come in the empennage kit in a separate bag there's two sets and one of the problems I had was originally, you couldn't get these to separate. I, I didn't know if there was some, you know, wax or buildup or mill scale or something that was inside here. So when I put it on the dimpling tool here, I would lower the dimple down. And then when the, the head came up, it, the, the dimpler or the dimple would not go with it. So I kept working with it. I put some solvents in there, uh, tried to get that to break up. Couldn't get anything to work. And so finally I just decided, uh, I took some valve grinding compound and I put this end on a drill and the other end just with my fingers. And I just spun it real lightly with the uh, valve grinding, just a touch of valve gr grinding compound in there. And that loosened it up. So. Both of them were that way, so I had to do that to both of them. The other thing was, once I started using my hand dimpler, because on those ribs, uh, it's a little bit tight, so you can't really do anything with the uh, DRDT with some of those ribs, because it's just too tight, and you have to use the hand 
uh, riveter to do that. So what I ended up having to do there, I, I installed the, um, let's see here, get this right. I installed the dimple dies in my tool and then I ended up having to, sorry for this. You can see here, I, gr I took the uh, angle grinder, put this in a bench, in a, in a bench vise, and I just took the angle grinder and just ground this down so that it was flatter. And that helped me now I could get into those tighter areas with the, the dimple tool. So I ran the wire for the trim motor actuator and the next step is to start skinning uh, this horizontal stabilizer. So before I start skinning, uh, there's going to be some divot or excuse me, some rivet or rivet holes that are going to need to be dimpled. So what I've done is uh, come up with a little bit of a system here so I can remember um, with the different colors because there's really four different rivet sizes that are gonna go into the horizontal stabilizer. And so first thing I did was identify where the dimples are gonna go. So anything that's circled in black, that's going to be dimpled. And those will obviously be uh, flush rivets. And then the different colors indicate the different rivets on these lines. So anything in red is gonna be a 989 rivet. Anything in blue is going to be a 998 rivet, black 995, and then green is 993. So um, this is how I'm going to try to work this so I don't get mixed up with the different sizes, uh, different size rivets, and hopefully uh, that'll speed up the process.